E equals mc squared. I'm guessing here that most of you have at least heard this equation before, that's why you clicked on the video. But how many of you actually know what it means? And that in actual fact it's only a small part of a much larger and more unifying equation. And after all, why does this even matter? I'm going to try and explain all this using just three equations. E equals mc squared is probably the most famous equation of all time. Coined by Albert Einstein in 1905 to explain the relationship between matter and energy, and in its simplest terms basically means that the energy of a particle is proportional to its mass by a factor of the speed of light, or the energy is equal to the mass of a particle times the speed of light squared. But this equation therefore only describes particles that have mass, some don't, and that aren't moving, otherwise they would have to have kinetic energy added into that too. So what we need is a larger, more general equation that can describe the energy of any particle, moving or not, massive or massless. And here it is, e squared equals mc squared squared plus pc squared. Here p is the momentum of a particle and c is still the speed of light. This equation tells us that the energy of a particle is directly related to both its mass and speed, since momentum is related to speed. To some of you this style of equation may look familiar, and that's because it's the same type of equation that can be used to describe a triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse or the longest side of a right-hand triangle. We can even put our equation into a triangle where energy is the hypotenuse and the other sides are mc squared and pc respectively. And then it would be true to say that mc squared squared plus pc squared equals e squared, just as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. For example, a particle with mass and speed would require the whole equation, since it has both energy from its momentum due to speed and its mass. This equation shows why humans, or anything with mass, cannot reach the speed of light, because the hypotenuse of a triangle is by definition always longer than each other side. And so no matter how large our momentum is, we will always have mass that stops E and PC equating. And in order for something to reach the speed of light, its ratio of PC to E has to equal 1, which it can't if there's mass. A particle that isn't moving, however, would have no momentum, which would mean that PC squared is equal to 0, and the equation would once again be reduced to our good old friend. A particle that is moving, but has no mass, for example a photon, would have a mass value of zero. And so for this particle, its energy is equal to its momentum times the speed of light. And so it can reach the speed of light because its ratio of PC to E is one. And from this equation, we can see that the velocity of any particle is equal to the speed of light times its ratio of PC to E. And if PC and E equal each other, as they do in the case of a photon, then its ratio is one. So we can see from this equation that the velocity of this particle is equal to the speed of light times one or the speed of light. And that's why a photon, or anything without any mass, is able to reach the speed of light, while we can't. But hang on a second, for the more keen eyes of you out there, you'll have your fingers poised over your keyboard, ready to furiously type in the comments section that momentum equals the velocity of an object times its mass. And if a photon has no mass, then surely it can't have any energy. You would be right if you weren't forgetting one thing that we call wave-particle duality. Now this is a topic large enough to deserve its own video, so we'll save that for later, but all we need to know now is that as far as we know, all matter can be described as waves and vice versa. It's how light is both described as a wave and a photon. This results in an equation formulated by Louis de Broglie saying that the momentum of any wave or particle is equal to Planck's constant divided by its wavelength, where the wavelength of any wave is its distance from peak to peak, or trough to trough, and the Planck constant is sort of like this magical number that describes the relationship between energy and frequency. So on a quantum level, the momentum of a particle has nothing to do with its mass, but its wavelength. And so the energy of a photon, or a massless particle, is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light, divided by the wavelength. Or from the equation, frequency equals the speed of light over the wavelength, E equals HF. The energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times its frequency. It's crazy to think how much can be deduced from just three simple equations. Hi, and welcome back to another video here on Cloud9 TV. And I know what you were thinking, what, what was that? What on earth was Joshua just doing? Yeah, it turns out I'm kind of, kind of interested in science as well. Fancy uh, dabbling in that little, that little pool. Sorry about not, not being here for the last two months or so. I've had a pretty tough time, you know, school's got pretty intense and um, I went on my Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award uh, practice expedition last weekend, which was pretty stressful. But yeah, I thought I'd try a new style of video this week, so let me know how it is. This might not necessarily be a, a permanent thing and I'm not giving up on that old style of video, so don't unsubscribe if you hate science, please. But if you did enjoy that video here, you can as normal do four things. You can like the video, you can comment down below with suggestions for future videos, say how your week was, whatever you want to say, put it down there. You can share the video to spread the love and if you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red box down below. 
and sign up for notifications by going onto my channel page and clicking on the grey bell. And what that does is it notifies you when I come out with a new video and it gives me loads of notes of support. But until next week, see ya!